Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today I want to talk about GitHub Actions. I have a couple of other videos and blog posts on it already, and I've espoused why I use them in a lot of my projects and a lot of my client projects. Today I want to talk about how to actually build them and run them more easily. If you've been struggling with GitHub Actions because it's hard to debug locally and you keep on checking them into source control and GitHub running them and reading the logs, I have a treat for you. I'm going to show you how to do it locally. Let's see what that looks like. So here I am in Visual Studio Code that you could be using Visual Studio as well. And I've got a project that just runs and all that, but in the GitHub workflows, I have a build. This is mostly built by just going into GitHub and adding an action for a .NET project, right? We have this simple .NET project and it's just gonna run and build. Nothing special about this. But checking this in and hope I got all the little pieces working exactly the way I want them to is frustrating. There has to be a better way. And so if we go ahead and build the project, just to make sure we know that it's actually building correctly. Gonna get this warning because I'm still in a preview. All worked, we're all happy, right? Inside of the YAML file, I'd like to run this. There has to be a way to do this more easily. What we can do is start a project called ACT. You can do this a few ways. You can use Choco install ACT CLI. If you're using Chocolatey, if you're using Winget, it's a little different. Winget install necos.act. And if you're on Mac or Linux and you can use brew, brew you can just say brew install act as well. And if you go to necos act on GitHub, you're going to see this project and that's what it's based on. And it shows you some ways to actually install it. There are some prerequisites as it shows here. We're going to need Docker for desktop for Mac or PC. And then you can go ahead and install it. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. There are ways to go ahead and download and install it directly if that's what you want. But for most Windows users, I would suggest just using Winget since it's already on Windows. Unsurprisingly, I already have Act installed. If I look at this, it's going to give me a lot of things to do. The event to run, any flags, and a, just a ton of these. But what's interesting is we can look in our project, since we're inside of a project, for Act and then dash L, and it'll show all of the workflows that you could be running from and because there's only one all we need to do is type act and act does essentially what the github actions do which is they're using docker to pull the images that you need pulling the data in and then running your project the first time you run this starting up docker is going to be a little slower especially if it's in sort of a sleep mode but then we can watch it do all these different things. And now we can see it's downloading the SDK for us. It's installing it. We'll get that ugly .NET screen that you get the first time you run it every time. And now we can see the whole job succeeded. Now, all we're doing in this particular test is just getting and building our project. There's no other magic there. And because we're using this, it doesn't need to necessarily download the project right? It assumes that these are all going to happen inside the project that it's built on. And so this doesn't go up to GitHub whatsoever. It just makes it work. So now you can run your own GitHub actions directly on your machine just to make sure they work before you check them in and wait for everyone to get notifications when you messed up. I'll put a link to the project down in the show notes. If you'd like to like and subscribe to the channel or this video, feel free. If you have any questions about it, please use the comments on this video. I try to answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks for joining me for another coding short.